Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is, what's in the box in regards to this extremely popular, very hype 2020 release from Czech Games Edition, Lost Ruins of Arnak? A game that combines deck building with worker placement with a um, Indiana Jones, quote-unquote, theme. I have not played this game. It's my first time cracking this one open for the first time. All I know about it is this is a surprisingly heavy box. So you get to discover with me what we get inside the box. Starting with cutting the shrink wrap off. Which Cut from the final video, I'm sure. Wonder if there's anyone out there that thinks I like. No. Okay. That right about there. Switches over. So much better than the roller coaster we used to have. <clears throat> All right, here we've got my copy of Lost Ruins of Arnak. Uh, they, this is, must be a new printing of it because it already shows it won the 2021, so we're nominated for the 2021 Kenner's Field of Jar, one of the most um, well-regarded awards in board gaming. So obviously this is a, a more recent printing of the game. So it's a 2021 printing of Lost Ruins of Arnak, which I don't know if that makes any difference. Cracking this open for the first time. This is by Min Nelwyn. And it's noisy. Piles of stuff. Those are big workers. Wow. Surprise number one. Look at the size of those meeple. Thank you. Whoa. Baggie wasn't sealed. Now I gotta watch my shirt. These just seem huge. So we have the, the, the various player pieces here, obviously, and player colors. With, with like the largest, here let's pick a color that probably picks up on the camera a little better, meeples I've ever seen. We have blue Indiana. We've got, I have no idea, uh, a sack or something, and a square. And two workers in each color. We're going to toss these back in this baggie and actually do it up this time. Next. Oh, these are cool. We have little pieces of broken tablet. I'm just going to try to take one of these out. So people they have really cool looking little tablet pieces. Really dig the look of those. Whole baggie full of those awesome looking little tablet things. I gotta say, uh, CG is not known for their box inserts. Catalog, all their latest games. We're not gonna bother flipping through that, but I do know they got the new edition of Galaxy Truck around the cover. 2021 catalog. A rolled up thing of baggies. Always appreciated, especially when there's no discernible insert. Then we've got very cool pieces. I am really impressed by these pieces. Though I gotta say they make the um the player ponds look kind of lame when you got nice like 3D runes and stuff. Then we've got blue dagger heads and red crystals. And those aren't just your standard aquarium crystals, so that's appreciated. Next, we have the indicator of this is a medium to heavy euro, a scoring pad, including lots of little icons showing all the various things you're going to score. We then have another indication that we have a medium to heavy game. We have the effect summary. Look at all those symbols. Look at all those. Oh, and a rule summary. Always appreciated. A massive deck of cards, which I'm just going to put aside for now. And the most ridiculously sized rule book I may have seen in a board game. This is like floppy and hard to hold. What is with the, uh, people's obsession with making the rule books the same size as the box? I got to say the nice big fonts appreciated. Also appreciate a full list, including showing the backs of cards and... That's good. Then we have the massive board, which I'm sure we'll be checking out in a moment. Game overview in five phases. 
They even have a recommended table layout. On your turn, digging into site, lots of examples here. I love this. Like, like most of the page is showing you examples. CG, I have never had a complaint about any of the rule books. This looks to be just as good as any others. I love the size of these examples. I guess there's a good, a good thing for having a big rule book. How to set up the next round. And the snake tent. So we have a variant. So, oh, that's interesting. This is actually like printed like the, the end of the book. It's got the credits on the back. Um, that's 18 pages in the core book. But then we have the snake temple side, which looks like they originally thought they might publish as a separate book. To put it in here. And then more summary on the back. Ridiculously sized, but looks very clear rule book. Uh, something some people are going to hate. Stickers. I assume these go on those player pieces. So we have stickers. Then we have punch boards. And this is why this game was so heavy. Uh, a not insignificant chunk of punch boards, which one just slid down. So there's actually one in between. Two more under here. Which I'm going to take out just so we can kind of see it. Punch boards. Lots and lots of punch boards. And then the game board. Or something else. I don't even know what this is. All right, let's flip through these punch boards quickly. And, and kind of take a look at these without knowing the game very well. This tells me nothing, but nice, thick. I can tell this is going to punch well. I don't want to punch anything out. Uh, more punch boards with, um, we're, we're going a little fantasy here, I think. More than historical. Some really creepy looking creatures here. Uh, then we have what looks like player boards. The player's home base camp, and there's an indication of how easy things are punching. Does this fold, like, multiple times? This stuff's falling out, so it's hard to tell what I'm looking at here. Oh, yeah, it's just a two-fold. So these are all together. One folded punch board. More cardboard tokens. The artwork here is really impressive, i got to say. Like, Hopefully you can see some of that. Really cool-looking artwork. I have to assume this is like, you're going to explore here and you need these resources. I did not do the thing where I watch a how to play video before unboxing this time. Everything two-sided. There's a snake in the jungle. And more tokens at the bottom. And the snakes are various animals. Creepy looking, almost fantasy. You got a very Land of the Lost feel to this game now. I see lots of meeple spots. I don't know if those are work placement spots. Arrows up and down. Then we have, what I'm guessing this is like a market board. Yeah, because these are all the different things we saw. So this is some type of market board. Or resource holding board. So this probably goes at the bottom of the board and stays the same no matter what you play. Oh, there's two sides to this one too. So here's the other side. Looks simpler. Maybe that's for solo play. And then we have the very busy main board, which I know this game has a massive board that is very busy, which we're going to not even be able to fit here on stream. So we're going to switch over here so I can hold this up. Okay, I knew this game had a big board. That is bigger than I expected. That's like almost as tall as one of my kids. Like massive board. That is one side of it. This is the other side of it. I have to assume this is the non-snake side, because I see a snake on this side. Huge board. You're going to, I know, fill this up. Or Sorry, there's your worker placement options. There's all your places you can go, and here's your board you're going to fill up with stuff. These are things at the top. It's a cool-looking board. Like it's, I, I like the art. But it's massive. It's huge. That is a huge board. And that's it for the components what I am going to do next is crack open this deck of cards. But first, I'm going to put a bunch of these back before anything gets lost. Because I can feel stuff falling out of these punch boards now. Which is why this isn't going to fit back in level. So yeah, one of the things that I'm sure people will uh, not be happy about is the, the lack of a box insert here. You've got a lot of wasted space once you punch everything out. And you're going to have lots of little tiny bits just floating around uh, in baggies. Which some people don't mind. But I am sure that the post-secondary market is doing well for Ruins of Arnak inserts at this time. So we're going to toss this over here. Take a look at all these cards. As a deck builder, all of the card backs are the same. 
Immediately, I'm going to say these the card quality here is not what I expected. It's a little thinner than I'd expect, and we do not have a linen finish, but I will say the cards aren't too slippery. So one of the things I do worry about without that linen finish, the cards are slippery. This is a pretty massive deck. Uh, what I'll do is I'll flip this over and just go through some of them without knowing the game. It's a little difficult to tell you exactly what I'm looking at. Um, I see a sea turtle, and i got to say, uh, the artwork here is really impressive. So here you can see sea turtle. Buy an ostrich, buy at a discount. Pack donkeys, horses, steamboats, automobiles, boots, gold plans. Obviously, these have symbols up in the top corner. Artwork is fantastic. Uh, it's all drawn artwork. There's no pictures. There's a parrot, a watch, binoculars. We're going to flip through some of these. Fishing rod. Every card's got unique art. Looks very clear. That looks easy to read across a table, which is awesome. Like, I can read that. At, at arm's length easy enough, and I'm pretty sure I could even read this across the table. Many cards just have symbols. I appreciate that. Again, this is a deck building game, so I'm sure somewhere in here are starter sets and so on. Um, there's obviously, you're going to collect different types of symbols because there's multiples. Now we're into some blue cards. I don't know what the difference is for the blue cards. But they all have monsters in the top corner. Um, looks like this is all equipment. Yeah, treasure chest, daggers, crystal bearings, mortar, serpents, gold really digging the art on this. I did not expect as fantasy a theme as this seems to have. I expected more, um, like, yes, Indiana Jones obviously goes fantasy as well, but I was expecting, uh, it's just not what I was expecting. Ornate Hammer, we have a ton of blue cards. Oh, now we must be getting into starting decks, because we have red, green, blue, and yellow. It looks like you're starting with only four cards that generate either Exploration or funding, which makes sense. Red deck, green deck, blue deck, yellow deck, and fear cards. So this looks like it's going to be one of those deck builders that has an adverse card you don't want filling your deck because it's going to be minus, I'm going to guess, points. End of the game. There you have a quick look at the rather significant card deck in Lost Ruins of Arnak. Alrighty, here we have the box, here we have the cards. I am so not happy about doing this. Uh, are these going to fit in one of the baggies? No, oh, they're tiny baggies. No way to contain your cards when putting this away. So you're going to want some kind of card box or something. And unfortunately, I don't have a, a quiver box or anything around to throw these in. So I am just going to try to make sure this game stays flat when I put it over there. So there you have Lost Ruins of Arnak. All right, I normally at this point would pick up this box and hold it to you and show it to you while I'm talking, but I'm not going to do that because one of the things CGE is not known for is they do not tend to put box inserts in their game, and this is no exception. So I'm not surprised by this, but there is a significant deck of cards in this box that if I now pick this up and turn it sideways, they're going to go everywhere. So it's going to stay on the table, so I apologize for that. So that was a look inside the box for Lost Ruins of Arnak, a worker placement deck building game mashed into one uh, with a very explore the lost ruins um, dude with a leather hat and a whip kind of theme to it. But much more of a fantasy element than I was expecting. Fantastic card art. Every card had a unique art on it, except for like the generic cards everyone starts with that just generate your basic resources. Component quality was an interesting mixed bag. Um, really highly detailed plastic pieces for like rubies or red gems and arrowheads, but then the chunkiest, biggest wooden meeple with hats I've ever seen. It's a, it's a strange combination of component quality there. It just feels like either everything should have been high quality plastic or everything should have been wood. Fair enough though. I doubt that's going to hurt the gameplay at all. Those are all kind of bonus things. I noticed there was money in this game and I'm sure some people out there are picking up metal coins to go with it. I am really looking forward to checking this game out. Many, many people have said this was one of the best games to come out in 2020. One of the best games they played in 2021. Nominated for a Kenner Spiel. That is the biggest award in board gaming right now. Really looking forward to checking out Lost Ruins of Arnak from CGE. Now, when I do check it out, I will be sharing my thoughts on social media. And you can find me everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. I'll also be posting a review on our YouTube channel as well as talking about it on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast that you can find on the podcatcher of your choice. You'll also be able to find a written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. All of that coming once I get Lost Ruins of Arnak to the table. 
I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. Good night and game on.